皆さんこんにちは NEC 中央研究所の吉野ですこちらが NEC の QKD システムの最新モデルになります 1.25GHz で動作し現在はユーザー実証試験中です This is the transmitter, Alice And this is the receiver, Bob They are connected by two fibers One is the quantum channel to transmit photons, and the other is the authenticated public channel to exchange information for key distillation processing. The system is assembled into a standard 19 inch rack based on the blade architecture. All the functions for QKD are divided into each blade like this. This blade is the optical transmitter, in which random number data are encoded into attenuated laser pulses through an optical encoder circuit with modulators. This optical transmitter blade supports a single quantum channel at a clock rate as fast as 1.25 GHz. By adding optical transmitter blades one by one, we can multiplex the quantum channel and can increase the key generation rate. This blade is the key distillation engine, which is dedicated hardware, and can process up to eight wavelength division multiplexed QKD channels, whose combined throughput amounts to a data rate of 50 gigabits per second. This is the receiver system. Photons enter into this blade of the optical decoder. In this blade, a received photon is directed into one of the four output ports of the optical decoder, according to the photon's pulse envelope. The four output ports are connected to four photon detectors right here. The received photon is finally detected by one of them. The detector device itself is an avalanche photodiode, whose size is only 5 millimeters. But the photon detector also contains a readout circuit and, as a result, is this big. Information about which detector unit has fired, as well as its click time, tells us which basis is chosen, X or Z, and which bit is obtained, 0 or 1. Part of the detected signals are then used to evaluate the bit error rate to detect eavesdropping attacks. The basis and bit values are sent into the key distillation blade. Then, appropriate error correction and privacy amplification are carried out, and the secure keys are finally extracted. The secure keys are then sent to the key management agent right here. This agent stores the key files and supplies them in an appropriate format to application devices. The key management agent also monitors and records the bit error rates and sends them to the key management server. Now, you can see the key management server's monitor, which shows normal operation as expected. But when the channel is tapped, the bit error rate increases immediately. The key management server then raises the alarm. The QKD system assumes that an eavesdropping attack has been made and stops the key generation. A probing unit will soon be activated to see what has actually occurred. If the cause is a simple failure like fiber disconnection or an optical tapping attack, it can be identified by this probing. Then, after the operators resolve the problem, QKD operations will be able to start again. If it were due to a more sophisticated eavesdropping attack, standard probing methods will not work. When the bit error rate does not decrease below the threshold, we have to switch to another spare fiber or another QKD link. This is the console unit to set up and shut down the QKD system. Uninterruptible power supplies are installed at the bottom of the rack, making the QKD system resistant to sudden power loss. 
In this rack, a data layer encryptor is also installed right here for high-speed encryption. This is actually an NEC commercial product named ComCypher and is based on the symmetric cipher AES. The secure key is supplied from the key management system and is used to enhance the security of the data layer encryptor. This integrated system, a so-called QKD-AES hybrid system, is now operating for a field test in our core facility for counter cyber attack activities. NEC